Singapore's Dr. Fu Chek Tech. Hello, I'm Singapore. Dr. Fu Chek Tech. And that is, do you think like Sun Tzu? In our studio is Dr. Fu Chek Tech. He is renowned for his research on the art of war. The art of war is it is a mind to mind battle. Hello, if you've been following me, you'll, you'll notice that I have done three major videos on Sun Tzu. And strategy is, and strategy is my uh, research focus. The first I actually started was to internalize Sun Tzu. And then the other thing which I emphasized most recently was to create your own out of war. Now, today, I'm going to talk about Three Kingdom. Why do I talk about Three Kingdom? Because Three Kingdom is the means for you to really understand Chinese culture in a deep way, especially the strategic thinking of the Chinese. I have been 2010 at the third Chinese management conference in China mentioned about the importance of Three Kingdom for Chinese management practices and I quoted Dr. Go Keng Sui who had emphasized in fact the three kingdom for SAF. SAF means Singapore Armed Forces, he was Defense Minister then. And I was then the second lieutenant in the Signal Battalion, the first Signal Battalion. I have spent the last 10 years going across China, the, the most north, the most south, as well as to the most of the West. Over 20 universities I've been across as a visiting professor. And one thing you will notice that the people of China is truly a real asset for the Chinese, for China as a whole. And because of the Chinese, that, of their culture, their history, their belief, their way of organizing, that they are really propelling ahead to lead the world in the future. Today I'm going to talk about something more interesting and really is that how do you want to, if you want to improve and write and create your own art of war, who should you learn from? If I were you, I would try and, and model and, and, and the, the, the kind of word is follow, right? You would want to look at the best and in my opinion, the best strategies in the world is really Mao Zedong. I was there visiting Mao Mausoleum in the 1980s and you can sense the admiration of the people for Mao Zedong. The way how he led China to fight against the Japanese is amazing. Mao Zedong has got certain characteristics about him but the most interesting thing about him is that he, he explained his skills as a strategy, where and how he acquired them. This was not through any military college, it wasn't through, you know, Hong Fu or all those top military schools, no. This was through reading the romance of Three Kingdom. In Chinese they call it San Kuo Yan Yi. Now it is a Yan Yi and it's not a San Kuo Zi. This is the historical record of the Three Kingdom period. It's different. It's not a historical, but it's actually the romance of the Three Kingdom. This is the romance of the Three Kingdom by Luo Guan Tong. The key word is Yan Yi. And from there, he actually formulates his strategies to counter against the Japanese invasion. Given that, he has, he has revealed how he became, how he acquired strategy skills. It is therefore interesting for us, for me as a scholar, to go further and investigate and research of, of, his, of his thinking. Therefore, you will find in this program later on, I will show you my travel to, to Hunan and to Shansa and then visiting his museum and looking at the way he writes. And the way he writes, you can decipher his thinking processes. Beyond that, I want to introduce you to Three Kingdom 
in this program. Why? Because three kingdom is alive today in Chinese community. If you, if you go to a board of directors meeting, all right, in, in America, you, you probably go to Harvard Business School and case studies, and you quote Michael Potter perhaps in the 80s, 90s, and you talk about this, uh, all the theories coming out from the bestseller book in New York, but not in China. China, they will still quote episodes from the Three Kingdom. So in this program, I will introduce you some of the topics that are found in Three Kingdom. Three Kingdom, there is nothing in the West, in American literature, that can compare with it. It is actually a literature of strategy. I equate it to Harvard Business Case Studies, you know, Harvard Compiler Case Studies. In 2010, in Lanzo Conference, the third Chinese Medicine Studies Conference, I actually mentioned this, that Three Kingdom can be seen as a collection of Harvard cases, except that it's on one timeline. And from there, you will find that if you were to look at it from that perspective, then you can see how Sun Tzu other work is being applied. And you will find also very interestingly that Three Kingdom reveals, unveils the strategic thinking and the processes of the Chinese. Hello, I'm going to talk to you today to introduce you about China as well as about how you could learn and understand China better. To sum it all, right, the Chinese, why does China succeed so well in 30 years that it could almost about, oh, it may have actually overtaken the United States of America? It is the people. The people of China are very unique. And then the people rose and moved, riding, walking, crawling. Thirty million of them spontaneously driven by an epic impulse rose and made their way west. The earth teeming with them, moving westward on a trek that stretched through 2,000 miles of roadless wilderness. Thus the world witnessed one of the most amazing spectacles in human history, the greatest mass migration ever recorded. Whatever could be of use and could be moved, the Chinese took with them on a Homeric journey. Their libraries, their schools, their hospitals, all dismantled and carted away. The machinery from over a thousand factories, weighing over 300 million pounds, was moved away in trucks and ox carts and on their backs. 2,000 miles away, 2,000 miles west. Wherever they could, they gathered along the few remaining railroads, waiting hoping for some chance to ride part of the way toward their westward goal. And when they had packed the last train with the last ounce of humanity and machinery, the tracks themselves were taken up, rail by rail, tie by tie, to be transported westward, to leave nothing for the enemy. a very determined law. Nothing could stop them, not even the rivers that narrowed into mountain gorges. West there loads of machinery more precious than gold.
progress was measured by the mile, by feet, by inches. They are fast learning. And since after the Second World War, they are very united. They are highly cohesive. And they enjoy 5,000 years long of continuing history of civilization. They may be the only country in the world that has that can trace back to 5,000 years of history. And the people upon which is led, very well led by the Chinese, of course there are they, they hiccups along the way, but then in general, China is, has got a rich culture. And one of the key culture I want to recommend to you, and but first you, you should understand the Chinese people as a civilization. Ronald Renegan mentioned about the Chinese people in his speech at Putan. The first was the trip to the wall. Now, I've seen pictures of it, I've seen on television, I've seen motion pictures and everything. I wasn't quite prepared for the feeling that I had standing there and looking at the almost impossibility of that structure, and then to think that a people did it several thousand years ago. And I was getting a little bit weak in the knees from climbing one of the steep slopes. <laughs> and then I said to myself, but a few thousand years ago, people were climbing this slope carrying rocks. <laughs> I have been up to the wall myself, and it's an amazing construction. Miles and miles is solidly built. And Bhutan is where I'm a research professor. And this is where you find that without the Chinese people, the mentality, the culture, the history, the social ethic, the social mode, I don't think China will have succeeded to overtake the US so quickly. As a research professor at Harvey Institute of Technology, I already found evidence of the fact that China would be overtaking the US even on innovation. Also, right, you will find there's even a song, very famous in China, called Tong Fang Hong, The East is Red. And you find that in the swirls of the song was about leadership. And what is the core principle of Sun on leadership? It's not the king that really matters, it's really the people. 2,500 years ago, he had already written right, that, that it's very important for the people to be accord with the leader so that they really die and not fear the dangers. And you find this song really put Mao Zedong as a person who cares for the people. It is something that I think the West can learn, especially America. The people are the foundation of society, not money. Nothing, not the army, but the people. And you get to hear Mao Zedong's own words and his, his own voice. And he was actually responding to this, the Korean crisis. And they were talking about negotiating peace then during that period. And of course, Americans got, got impatient. And then they said, look, you know, we'll decide this matter of where we're going to settle this matter through bomb bombing, you know. And what the Mao said, well, we will welcome you. Right? We are not afraid. We will wait for you. As long as you want to fight, we fight. And we let you decide how long you want to fight. That's the kind of determination Mao has. You want to fight? I don't want to fight. You want to fight? 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 就是说，他们要打独救，就打独救，一次打到，完全胜利。Besides that, I would say there are three attributes 
in my opinion, from my study analysis of Mao, that about him, what, what, what made him so able to, to become the leader of a country that at his time he was controlling it 700 million. Right? Number one, his grasp of power. Right? He's very good in, in grasping power. And secondly, secondly, he's very good in map reading. He's able to look at the map and therefore plan strategies based on the map. His analysis of the map and of the ground situation, as Sutta said, the ground is very important. He utilized that, that ability very well. Then thirdly, you also see that he is extremely good in writing orders, instructions. And in the past, they have to send it by, by radio, right, to instructions on what to do in a specific situation. And interestingly, the music has the records of all these letters by him, or instructions by him, and orders by him. This is the schedule of my program then at Hunan University in Changsha. I collaborated in research on Mao Zedong. You want to look up this paper in the Chinese management studies available at Research Gate. And what I believe is that the idea of this the long march in Chinese is called Changzhen may perhaps come from an episode in the Three Kingdom. Three Kingdom as a culture of strategy. That should be your approach. In other words, when you read and study the romance of the Three Kingdoms, the whole purpose is to distill within from the Chinese history the essence of Chinese strategic thinking. Let me give you an example. Whenever you talk to the Chinese and you tell them, for example, names like Chao Chao, they will immediately be able to respond to you and know who you are talking about. In other words, the word Chao Chao represents a typology of characteristics. And then within it, there's also this uh, the, the strategies who are supposed to be divine strategies. Then you have Liu Pei, Huang Kong, as well as Zhang Fei. All these characters are as well known in England, for example, as Julius Caesar. You know, Shakespeare, you go to England, you want to talk to Greek English, you, you speak all Shakespearean plays. In the same way, Three Kingdom contains interesting, very interesting episodes that we make into movies, like the Red Cliff, for example, the use of fire to destroy. 
Sun Tzu actually mentioned about this, about the wind arising. Uh, to, to implement the fast strategy, you need to study the wind pattern. Therefore, Chukka Liang borrowing the wind strategy may well be from observation of the moon in the night sky. And you see the next clip I'm going to show you where it has been dramatized into a theater, this borrowing the wind. really is we are trying to and trying to convince you to really learn trick in them and you, you are a bit assisted by the fact that there are now videos they are very long videos they are not short short videos they are actually in a series some as long as 84 volumes 84 videos but then if you go through them systematically you will then acquire a very unique Chinese way of looking at things and thinking and, and then this will be useful for you especially for the long term towards up to 2050 you know when China is going to likely to dom dominate in the world of economics I will share with you an episode that illustrate clearly how Sun Tzu original instructions 2,000 years ago is applied by the Chinese against the Japanese about especially about this dong 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 that the soldiers actually reacted and responded according to it and how the element of surprise work and how fluidity able to move and able to move like water has been applied and this is actually based on on documentary produced by the US Here Sun Tzu is actually quoting from a book called Qin Zhen, Book of army management where the spoken word cannot be heard use the gongs and the drums as well as also the banners and flags the whole idea is enable this to be able to be perceived by a person's eyes and ears and the chinese had still other tricks to pull from their patched and faded sleeves you will notice that this map of jap conquest doesn't look like the military maps you have seen in the previous film by all military standards, it should have looked like this, which is the way the Japs wanted it to look. But the Japanese were learning that the occupation of Chinese cities and control of Chinese rivers and railroads still was far from meaning the subjugation of China. For the Chinese had formed themselves into guerrilla bands trained to harass the Jap forces. These guerrillas were mostly farmers who had stayed behind on the land when the great migration to the west took place. Peaceful farmers one day, deadly fighters the next. They made an unpredictable and uncontrollable enemy. the lines of communication but in the pockets thus formed these unconquerable guerrillas constantly sniped at the Jap invaders when the Japs tried to annihilate them they disappeared only to reappear in another pocket <laughs> with speed and surprise, they ambushed enemy patrols. One interesting episode in the Three Kingdom involving Chao Chao was the fact that, you know, the Chinese doctor, the famous doctor called Hua Tuo, came to see him about his very severe head that he had. And he told him, look, you know, you need to have a surgery. And what did Chao Chao did? Chao Chao is a highly suspicious man. He put that doctor to death. And you mention that episode, every Chinese that you meet in China will be able to give his view and opinion about it all. Uh, 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 uh,
动刀开颅。我的命啊，你认还是动摇 ？Then there is another very interesting story about seven steps, walking seven steps to create a poem. How a brother saved his own life from being put to death by his another brother by simply showing that through a poem that I will share with you later on. How the poem saved. This brother's life. Here is the poem rendered in pinyin in case you want to, to, to recite it yourself and the English version right, is also given here the key idea really is that we are all from the same family and why are you so impatient to want to kill us but in seven step to render the poem is not simple to do you had a very famous Hong Chen Ji the empty city strategy within the romance of three kingdom Like一艘空船，船辆后军变前军撤军，粮草都在城中，为何撤军？诸葛亮在城中设了埋伏。请都督下令，末将领兵杀进城去。城中伏兵是不多，可城中之外的山上呢？诸葛亮平生谨慎，从不走险。快撤！撤完了，山中伏兵就杀出来了。撤！快撤！ And of course, there's controversy in China whether the event actually happened. It is how a city is being defended against a huge approaching army by using psychology. That in, that he actually is called the empty city strategy of Kong Chen Ji. Zhuge Liang was really very timely way. He threw open the city gates and he appeared very calm. He went on top of the city wall. He played the jitter in such a way that shows that he is very calm. He's not worried. And Sima Yi, the general on the opposite side, was looking at it and say, and, and he sensed that. Maybe it's a trap. Maybe the city. That's therefore he hold back the army. 
from attacking. He told his son, Let, let's withdraw. It's because Sukkagan is so famous as a strategy that or, or coining stratagem that they, he thought that definitely there must be a trap. And this has been made into a Beijing chi, what do you call a, a Beijing drama, a theatre. And if you read the Three Kingdom and studied the Three Kingdom, you will know that Huang Gong, now they call Huang Di Gong, is actually a real general in the Three Kingdom period. Who has been made into a deity. He is not in worship in temples. And he has been elevated to a level of Bodhisattva in, in Buddhism. So I think it is good for you. Therefore, that if, you, if you go through and understand Trikina, you, know, you will understand many more facets of Chinese culture. It's not just studying a book or strategy as such, but it's really to understand the wider perspective of Chinese culture. But I'm planning to start a group. We have a group to, to, who want to go through the Three Kingdom episode by episode using one, one serial of Three Kingdom that I think is historically most uh, closely modeled after the, the, the novel, the Romance of Three Kingdom. And you ask yourself, right, why is, is, why is it necessary for me to do that, to, to learn that? Because it is something that is so rooted in Chinese culture, it's worth your effort. Secondly, wouldn't you agree with me, the world is becoming chaotic, right? There's a saying in Three Kingdom, the first few lines of the Three Kingdom, right? That means the king that the world, right, when it's united, after a while, it will become disunited. Fen, he, he, fen. And now we're in a stage where we are, we are doing quite well, economically, the world as a whole. But now, the world looks like being decoupling is coming. In fact, I call it geology, right? The earth also at one time was one mass, and then after that it, it began to open up and separate. This integration is coming, and it looks like the world is coming into three spheres of influence now. The US, China, and then you have this, the, the non-aligned. In the current dynamics, China versus US and countries are now being aligned, aligning themselves. And then therefore you have this uh, more or less three kingdom portion of it come emerging. And one of the key conflict areas is the South China Sea, which in my opinion, you probably the Chinese would not yield because I think for them they had experience. I will show you this clip to explain why the China sea, South China Sea is so important to China. China's supply lines from the outside world were cut off by Jap warships blockading the coast. The Japanese strategy was the isolation of China. And you'll see that since other war principles will be applied to the battle in the South China Sea rather than on the land. It's a new, it's a new application, a new contact, the sea instead of on the land. Clearly, tricking them is interesting in showing you the dynamics of change. Well, you have heard my earlier presentations on this the Three Kingdom, as well as on Mao Zedong. And Mao Zedong claimed that he has his, his really thinking, his really ideas came from, from Three Kingdom. What I'm going to do now is to close it all by explaining a little to the background of how Three Kingdom come about as a book. Now this is the Chinese book Sun Kuo Yang and of course you find that it is, it is when I open the book you'll find the first cover by the Chinese is this Guang Kong as you know we discussed about Guang Kong and now has been deified and temples in China on him 
and you find that there are various pictures, but then most importantly is the book itself, you compile, actually has got 100, uh, 120, 120 chapters. It's a substantive work. But how did this work come about? It is not true, as in US, where in America, where someone conceptualizes it and write it or collect data and, and, and then, you know, do this analysis and then correlation and then produce, produce a method or concept. Or maybe just from idea modeling it. This is a different approach, how this literature comes about. And they're all together 1,000 characters. So it's not a novel in that sense, a typical novel where there's a key character. What is interesting about this Three Kingdom Sanko Yan Yi is the fact that it came about by farmers after hard day's work. And again, I tell you, people are very important. The Chinese people are very interesting people as a civilization. What do they do in the evening? The moon is up in the sky and it's cooling and they wanted to relax after a hard days of work farming. They sit down and they chit-chat and they, they invite a storyteller to come and tell a story. And this story, in other words, this treatment came about by a oral tradition. People talking about sitting down, relaxing and then chat, chatting and somebody compiled the Ming Dynasty. And actually, interestingly, we have this Three Kingdom. I'll show you the English version that came about through a translation. What I talk is Zhuge Liang. What is very important really for you to realize as I began the lectures on explaining the difference between San Kuo Tzu and San Kuo Yen Yi. Interestingly, it, took, it takes two volumes to, to bring about this uh, complete translation of this book. But if you read this book, it's going to be tough going. Why is it tough going? Simply because it is a huge range of characters involved. My recommendation is that to take advantage of a new technology that's, that is pervasive. And we use this technology in order to review and we look at the episodes that have been, been covered in, in the serial. Some of them are as long as, as I said to you, uh, 84 uh, uh, or maybe even more a new, a new serial that come. But what we do is we really go as episode by episode and then we look at the good thing about this as a matter of learning is to see people in action. In a real world, there is no textbook, as I tell my students. There is no textbook. The textbook is made from your experiences, from your dialogue, from your interaction, and you plan for the future. That is strategy. Strategy is never about the past. It is about the future. Let me put this away for the time being. It's very important. So strategy, as I explained to my audience, that really it is about the future. But the thinking, the strategic thinking is the key to put all this, your conversation, your data you collect, your statistics and, and your perceptions and your, your view of how the world is going to be, you put them together into formulating your own strategy. As I said, we should render strategy explicit, from implicit to explicit. What is important then is to follow from here, is that we have this three kingdom approach, is to help you give you episode case studies. And if you can think in a metaphorical way, like for example, General Chang Jin as CEO, you know, and then the soldiers as workers, and and and, and the metaphorical approach, if you utilize that in your strategic thinking, then treating it is a great help. It gives you many, many examples, far beyond what we have covered in, in this program. We actually, you, you can include Tong Zhuo, the guy who first started, who created uproar in the Han dynasty, and then where the Chao Chao came about, you know, and the very interesting episode is really that Chao Chao took a knife, and then he was able, he wanted to kill Tong Zhuo, but then Tong Zhuo awoke, and then he, how Chao Chao then turned around and said, look, this knife is meant for you as a thief. If you study Three Kingdom, your Three Thinking will be an arm. But you must be patient. You cannot dabble overnight by doing a two-day workshop. It's, I believe it's a lifelong thing. So my proposal, my proposal is really, as I said earlier, is to form a group and then to get this going. I hope you 
look into this and think about it. We will not be in a rush to get this going, but it should be, in, in other words, we follow the farmer's approach. We will meet regularly and then we will bring about discussing episode by episode, perhaps two episodes, but the, the requirement is that before you attend for the dialogue on, on, on Zoom or whatever technology we use, you must have review those two or three episodes before we come to further discussion. Because if you are going to rely on everybody that telling what happened in the episode, that it will not be fun for you. The idea is to see how other people see the same event. You must realize that every human being is unique. Our thumbprint is unique. There's no second thumbprint the same as yours. Therefore, how you see things and how other people perceive things becomes something of interest. Well, I have give you the background, I give you the and the world now as I covered earlier in my lectures is becoming one whereby the world is, is, is opening up, is splitting up again. In the, in the past we were moving together towards one world and then now you have the decoupling, the dynamics of decoupling, people want to segregate and separate. But it still remains important for you to build a literature. And the best way to understand China is through its literature. And we will begin with tricking them.